Hello everyone. Today we are going to be looking at rank of a matrix and as usual we are only going to be applying the theorems to solve the problems. We're not going to prove any of these theorems. And here we are going to be using vectors uh, in this scenario. We're going to be looking at the rows and columns of a matrix and how interestingly their relationships emerge in these vector spaces. Okay, let's start with the definition first. The first definition is of a row space of a matrix. If A is an M by N matrix, then we say the row space of A is nothing but the set of all linear combinations of the row vectors of A. And we denote it by row A. It is the same as the column space of A transpose. Now clearly, because it is a set of all linear combinations of the row vectors of A, then row A or row space of A is a subspace of Rn. Now, another powerful theorem number 13 here, it states that if two matrices A and B are row equivalent, then their row spaces are the same. So if I have a B, which when you apply the algorithm as usual of section 1.2, so if B is in the echelon form, the non-zero rows of B will not only form the basis for the row space of A, but also they will be of that for B. It's little different than the column spaces basis, guys. Keep that in mind. Very finite difference over here. Okay, so let's do an example practice here. Find the basis and dimension for the row space of A. So if I have a matrix A, which is of three by four here, and we apply the algorithm, uh, the row echelon form, we get this matrix. So clearly, the row spaces are the first two. Now you can write it like this, or you can write it in a row form, doesn't matter. So the basis for the row space of A is the, as the previous theorem says, these are the non-zero elements of the you know, form a rows of B. Okay, now let's look at the rank of the matrix A. Now, we've done this before, so let me just repeat it again. The rank of a matrix is nothing but the dimension of the column space of A. It is denoted by rank A. It simply means how many pivot columns are in the matrix A or how many basic variables are in the matrix A. Now, the dimension of the null space of A is called the nullity of A. A very important fact that the dimension of the row space of A is exactly the same as the dimension of the column space of A transpose. Let's look at an example, guys. If we have the same matrix which was above, it's a three by four matrix. Now, when we applied the algorithm, if you look at the top, it had, this was the algorithm when we applied. So we had the row equivalent form to be um, 1, minus 2, 7, and 5, uh, 0, 0, then minus 5, 5, and 3, and then the last row was a bunch of zeros. Okay, now notice the rank of A are the two pivot columns, and that's 2. The null space of A are the number of free variables, which are two. And the dimension of the row space is exactly the same as the non-zero rows of the echelon form of this matrix, which is two. Okay, let's look at another example to get a little idea of what to, how to do these problems. Okay, so I have this matrix A, which is three by five. Okay, now when you apply the algorithm, we get this kind of a matrix. In this one, there are two pivot columns. The first and the third is the pivot columns. That means that becomes the rank of A, which also automatically becomes the dimension of the row space of A. Because remember, it has only two non-zero rows in the echelon form. Now, what is the nullity of A? How many free variables? The column 2, 3, 4, and 5 represents the three variables. The nullity of A is 3. And you will notice that when you add the rank of A 
and the nullity of A, it actually gives us the number of columns of A. And that leads us to the rank nullity theorem. Okay, what does it say? If A is an M by N matrix, then the rank of A, which is nothing but the dimension of the columns of space of A, which is nothing but the number of perfect columns or the number of basic variables, when added to the nullity of A, which is the dimension of the null space of A, which is nothing but the number of free variables, it is equal to N, which is the number of columns of A. So, also that the dimension of the column space of A is the same as the dimension of the row space of A, where A is an M by N matrix. Now, we're going to go and recollect something of the IMT, the Invertible Matrix Theorem, because you've learned a lot here. So it says that if A is an N by N matrix, then IMT says that the column of A will form the basis of Rn, or the column space of A is Rn, the dimension of column space of A is Rn, that means the rank is N, that means if the rank is N, that means the null space is only having a zero element. There's nothing in the null space. And the dimension of the null space is zero. Remember, the if you have a zero element, that means the zero. Remember, null space of A is all the elements which are matching onto the zero element. Or when you multiply it, so only the zero, it only has a zero vector. That's what this means. It's a zero vector. And a zero vector is a subspace of every vector space. So the dimension of the null space is zero. Now let's do some examples, which will help us get some practice. Okay, if our A is a 6 by 8 matrix, and we're given that the dimension of the row space is 5, so what would be the dimension of the column space of A transpose? Remember that the dimension of the row space of A is the same as the dimension of the column space of A transpose. So hence, dimension of the column space of A transpose is 5. Okay, now let's look at another scenario. If I have an 8 by 5 matrix and we're given the nullity of A to be 3, nullity means the dimension of the null space of A. Now, what is the rank of A? By the rank nullity theorem, the rank of A and the nullity of A is equal to the number of columns of A, which is 5. So if the nullity of the matrix A is 3, then the rank of A is 5 minus 3, 2. Okay, let's look at another problem. If the matrix A is a 4 by 7 matrix and it has 4 pivot columns. So if it has 4 pivot columns, that means the dimension of the column space or the rank of A is 4. If you get confused, guys, just think of this 4 by 7. So you say, and it has 4 pivot columns. Make your life easy and say, hey, you know, four, 4 rows, that means. And it has 4 pivot columns. Think of this as your, okay. So every time you have to think, what is it, what is it asking us? So this is very important. 4 by 7 matrix and 4 pivot columns. So, if I were you, I actually would create those 4 pivot columns which the most easiest of all. Basically, these are the columns of the identity matrix of size 4. So, it has 4 rows and 4 pivot columns. Great. Now, this can be anything. We don't care because these are 7 of, they are 7 columns. Do you see that? So, if it has four pivot columns, that means the number of pivot columns is four is the same as the rank of A, which is the dimension of column space of A. Also, we know that, that the column space of A is a subspace of R4. Now, R4 dimension is what? Dimension of R4 is four, and the same is the dimension of the column space of A. So clearly, the column space of A is nothing but R4 because R4, remember, it can have many bases. And so if I have the column space, that means four pivot columns, that means four columns of A are basically 
generating the whole um, column space of A, so column space of A is nothing but R4. If, just keep in mind, if the dimension of the column space is exactly the same as the subspace of what, it, uh, uh, as the, uh, uh, sorry, if the dimension of the column space of A is equal to the number of rows of the matrix, then that column space of A is nothing but that R and the number of rows. Keep that in mind. Very simple thing to look at it. Okay. So by the nullity theorem, what would be the dimension of the null space of A? It would be 3 because total number of columns is 7. The rank of A is 4. 7 minus 4 is 3. But null space of A, okay, what it is this here? but the null space of A, and notice what is the null space? It is a subspace of R7. Even though the dimension of null space is 3, but it is a subspace of R7. And hence, null space of A cannot be equal to R3. Very important, guys. For null space to be equal to R3, it has to be a subspace of R3. That's what it means. Okay. Now, there are some other problems which I've picked up from, uh, very similar to the problems given in the book. So here's it. If I have a 4 by 7 matrix and has rank 3, then what would be the dimension of the null space of A? That means it will be rank nullity theorem says 3 plus dimension of null space is 7. And hence, the dimension of null space is 4. What about the dimension of the row space? So the dimension of the row space of A is the column space of A, which is the rank of A, which is 3. What about the dimension of the rank of, um, uh, uh, what is it, rank of A transpose. So the rank dimension of, or, or sorry, what about the rank of A transpose? Rank of A transpose is the dimension of column of A transpose, which is the same as dimension of row of A, which is 3. Okay, let's look at another problem. I have a 6 by 8 matrix and it has 4 pivot columns. Okay. Now, 4 pivot columns means find the following. What is the dimension of the null space of A? So if it has 4 pivot columns, which simply means that our, I have 6 rows but 4 pivot columns. Okay. That means the rank space of A is 4, which is the same as the dimension of the column space of A. And the column space of A is a subspace of but R6. So column space of A cannot be equal to R4. As the vectors in column space of A have six entries. Okay. So if you have, think of this one, how would you think this matrix would look like? Let me just make a little matrix for you. It has six rows. Remember that. Okay. And but has four pivot columns okay so we can have say one zero zero you know uh, I'm just making it eight of them and has four pivot columns so it can be zero zero one and then uh, zero zero so six of them zero 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 um, one then so three pivot columns and one two three and I can have a bunch of zeros also in the end. And 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So 1, 2, 3. Then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So this one, 8. Um, so 4 pivot columns. And then how many numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It can be anything. We don't care. Okay, but it has 6 zeros. So that means these are going to be a bunch of zeros, guys. Okay, you can have a bunch of zeros, but it has only 4 pivot columns. That's a none. 4 pivot columns means the dimension of the column space or the rank of A is 4. Now let's look at another example here. 
given a matrix of size 4 by 6 and a null space is 4 dimensional. That means the nullity of A, uh, nullity of A or the dimension of the null space is 4. So what would be the dimension of the column space? It would be the rank of A or the column space of A plus by the rank nullity theorem 4 equals 6. 6 is the number of columns. So the rank space or the dimension of column space is 2. Okay, let's look at another example. If the null space is a five by if the null space of a five by four matrix is two dimensional, then the dimension of the null space is two. And because it has four columns, by rank nullity theorem, dimension of the column space is also two. And we also know that the dimension of the row space is the same as the dimension of the column space, which is two. Okay. If A is a 7 by 5 matrix, then the largest possible rank of A is 5. And how do we know that? Because rank means the number of pivot columns. So if it's a 7 by 5 matrix, so, so 5 columns, remember the, rank, the largest possible rank of A is 5 because I only have 5 columns. So in other words, Remember, rank of A is how many columns, pivot columns. So if it is a 5 matrix, so I can have here 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I'm making an easy life for myself, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Only 5 columns are there, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, okay, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what happens? I can have many columns over here, okay? Say, I don't, it doesn't matter, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3. It has to be have only five pivot columns. Just remember, even if I have five over three, I can basically do manipulations and get five because it cannot go beyond that, okay? Or I can have uh, one, minus, minus one, minus one, minus one, zero, three. No matter what happens, we can do our algorithm and we'll still end up getting five pivot columns. So if you do the, uh, say, apply the algorithm, we can get still, say, 0, 0, 008. We can do still the math and we can get this to be five pivot columns. So by rank nullity theorem, the largest possible rank of A is five. Okay, or another way, way you can also look at this form. Um, let me just do it on a, we go down here. Okay, this one. Now the rank nullity theorem says the number of columns, if you don't want to look at it graphically, the rank nullity theorem is the rank of A plus the nullity of A should equal five. Okay, so what possible values I can have five and zero? 4 and 1, 3 and 2, uh, 2 and 3, 1 and 4 and 0 and 5. So by the rank nullity theorem, I think this is much more better way of proving it. We can basically remove all this, applying simple algebra, which works much more better. I can see, yeah. Because you see, the rank nullity theorem says that when you add this, it should always equal 5. So if I have a look at all possible scenarios, the largest possible rank of A is 5. Okay. So let's look at this one, ninth. If A is a 5 by 7 matrix, then the largest possible rank of A is 5 as column space of A is a subspace of 5. So in this scenario, we are having a different thing. So if I have a 5 by 7 matrix, the largest possible rank is only 5. The reason is the column space is a subspace of R5. Then the rank nullity theorem doesn't take into place because the rank nullity theorem says 7. Do you see that over here? So in this one, the rank nullity theorem says the rank R plus the nullity equals 7. So according to this, it would be 7 plus 0, that's the maximum, 7 and then 6 plus 1 and so forth. 
are 5 plus 2. But remember that it is a column space. The rank means the dimension of the column space. And the column space is a subspace of R5. So that means it cannot have more than 5 entries. 7 means, the rank means it has 7 entries. You cannot have that. Okay, last problem here. If A is a 3 by 7 matrix, then the smallest possible dimension of the null space is 4. Okay. Okay, this one. The reason is it is not the column as the null space of A is a subspace of R3. Okay, hold on. I think it's this is some typo. Here, sorry. Remove this. Okay. If A is a 3 by 7 matrix, then the smallest possible dimension of null space is going to be Four. Okay, let's see if it is feasible. Now it is seven and there are three rows. Okay. okay, guys, I think I just said something wrong here. So here's it. If A is a three by seven matrix, the smallest possible dimension of null space is four. The reason is, as column space is a subspace of R3. If it is R3, that means the highest possible dimension of the column space is going to be 3. Okay, so let's look at this one. So let's look at this scenario because 7 is the rationality theorem, okay? We have 7 here. So what are the possible ways to get, it can be either 7 plus 0, not possible. Remember, 7 means representing the rank because the column space is R3. So 6 will not work. So this is representing rank, guys. The first one is representing rank. 6 plus 1. Now this one represents the nullity, remember. It's 7. So 5 will also not work, 4 will also not, 3 will work because 3 plus 4 gives me 7. Because the subspace of columns, uh, column space of A is a subspace of R3. That's what we know. And hence, that is the highest possible rank for A and it will be the minimum, minimum, minimal possible rank for null space of E. Because what happens? If the column space is 2, we can think of this way. If the column space is 2, then 2 plus 5 will make it 7. 5 is a bigger dimension. We are looking at the smallest possible dimension. And hence, this is the most appropriate answer. Thank you.